I vow to participate in imperial ceremonies when called upon. Yashi and his father lived on the opposite side of the market as Citrus Secondary, about a ten-minute walk from the town center. The houses in the area were modest, mostly owned by market vendors, but Yashi and Quax had always appreciated the spacious, grassy land that stretched between homes, a rarity in the more populated parts of Citra. When they were younger, they would spend hours by the Konya household on their days off, playing tag in the fields and swimming in the sparkling creek. Yashi removed his sandals before entering the house. He took a seat at the oak table, which was a gift from the Avariums. Twelve years prior, Quax's parents had welcomed Martu into Citra after he converted from the Atheris Empire. They helped him find a home, supplied him with furniture, and even secured him a stall at the market. They were warm people, and after everything they had done to help, Yashi had hurt their son. He slammed the tattered articles on the table. This investigation was harming more than himself. It was a wildfire, spreading to everything and everyone around him. He shoved the mess of pages aside and dragged a stack of unfinished homework assignments in its place. There has to be a way to fix this. For hours he sat there, searching for an assignment that looked manageable. An agonizing eternity passed before Martu stepped inside with a stack of empty baskets in his arms. Yashi? Are you doing homework? Uh, I'm trying to. Yashi set his elbows on the table and ran his hands through his hair. What happened? I punched Quacks. What? He got a hold of my articles about Cal and he ripped them. And I punched him. I feel awful. He was only trying to help. When he faced his father, Martu's eyes widened. I thought we agreed that you'd keep those articles at home for safety reasons. Martu had always encouraged Yashi's investigation in secret, but Quax had been right all along. There was no safe way to approach this. Yashi had been ruining his life to explore an unsolvable mystery. And for what? What would answers bring him? Uh, honestly, Father, I don't think I should have kept the articles at all. Martu placed the baskets on the kitchen countertop. You know what? Why don't we get some practice in? Right now? Why not? We can talk about this, move around a little. It might help you sort your thoughts. Yashi rubbed his temple before standing from the table. Okay. They left the house together and stopped on the front porch. An old brass lantern hung to the left of the front door. Martu struck a match and lit the candle inside the lantern. Its wiry exterior strained the candlelight into beautiful shapes. I still don't understand why you light this lantern every evening. It's an Eastern tradition. Martu closed the lantern door and smiled. Your mother adored these kinds, the intricate ones. Her father was a lantern maker. Really? He and your mother worked on this one together. Wow. You never told me. I assume you didn't bring anything to Citra when we converted after the war. Well, I didn't bring much. Just this lantern. And you, of course. I see. I come second to high-quality craftsmanship. I'm glad you know your place. <laughs> <laughs> a collection of flat stones formed a pathway from the porch to the backyard around the corner. Yashi hopped from stone to stone, a childhood habit so strong that it felt wrong not to do, even on the worst of days. He jumped from the final stone and landed barefoot in the backyard, the surrounding shrubs encasing him in a secluded world. The unkempt grass tickled his ankles as he left it behind, stepping onto a cobblestone platform. Show me your stance. Yoshi reached the end of the platform, turned around, and positioned himself with his hands raised. Loosen your shoulders. Right. Bad habit. Stop and go? Sure. Martu joined him on the platform and raised his hands, mirroring Yoshi. Now, tell me. Why shouldn't you keep the articles? Go. Yashi sprung toward him with a jab, but Martu leaned back. His fist hit nothing but the air in front of his father's nose. Stop. They held the position. Those papers are ruining my life. 
How exactly are they ruining your life? Go! Yashi tried a combination this time. Martu dodged the first two punches and blocked the last. Stop. Um, I'd say the papers have ruined pretty much everything. Most of my friends don't talk to me anymore. I fall into the bottom of the class, and I didn't want to tell you, but if I don't show any progress this term, they're going to hold me back a year. If it weren't for my obsession, then I wouldn't have hit quacks today either. The last thing I wanted to do was hurt people. And if you're held back a year, would that really be the end of the world? What? Are you crazy? Yoshi punched a few times as a distraction before pivoting into a kick. Martu locked an arm around his leg, trapping him. With a single step backward, he sent Yoshi pummeling toward the platform. The stones jabbed into his shoulder blades, and he groaned. I didn't say go. Martu released Yoshi's leg and crouched next to him. You told me once that the cow in these articles isn't the cow you knew. Go! Yoshi attempted to hop back to his feet, but Martu shoved him down. Stop! He pressed a cold pocket knife against Yoshi's neck. <sighs> Father. What's your response? Yoshi recalled how Cal would ignore Quacks when he tried to show her his inventions. She was a stranger to everyone, including her own brother. Yoshi chose to believe that Cal had murdered out of hatred for Chima, not love for Quacks. But how could he be so sure? Well, what did I know about Cal? She was cold and reserved, and she happened to be my best friend's sister. I didn't know her. And if I hardly knew Cal when she sat right in front of me at the dinner table, how can I expect to know her now? With nothing but third-party opinions from the same source. Maybe Cal really does deserve what she has. And if not, what could I possibly do anyway? Martu removed the blade from Yashi's neck, tucked it away, and helped him to his feet. You're right. You can't change anything now, but who's to say about the future? Your intuition is sharp, and it shouldn't be ignored. You never know when you'll come across an opportunity to use your ideas for the greater good. Everyone says I've lost my way. I can assure you that many others are asking the same questions, but they're absolutely terrified. So it takes someone brave, like you, to pursue answers on their behalf. What you need to learn is how to continue doing that in a sustainable way, without drawing unnecessary attention to yourself. You mean, learn to hide who I am? Learn to wait. I want you to be patient with your questions, and selective with the people you share them with. Some will try to hurt you for speaking your mind, while others are simply not ready to listen. You must master how to gauge when and where to explore and discuss these concepts. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess. The crickets chirped louder, and the birds began to squawk. Martu's brows furrowed as a raindrop splattered against his head. He raised his chin to the clouds, and his lips spread into a delicate smile. The, the sky, sky weeps, weeps with, with us. us. Droplets of water trickled down their cheeks resembling tears. Martu had always described the island as bipolar. One moment the clouds would be bright, and the next they'd be raining a storm. One moment there would be peace, and the next there'd be war. The only consistency was that the clouds never left. Rain or shine, east or west, those same clouds hovered over them. It may not feel like it now, Yashi but you're exactly where you need to be. The following afternoon, nearly 4,000 town residents gathered in the courtyard of Citrus Secondary. Whether they knew Quacks personally or not, they believed the Belladonna Prodigy's little brother could do nothing but win. Yoshi wished he could skip the ceremony and hide in the comfort of his home, but as a 15-year-old, his attendance was mandatory. He stood with over 300 selection-age students from Citra, 
in a designated area closest to the stage. As they waited for the ceremony to commence, the student stared at Quacks. His eye was swollen half shut, framed with blotchy clumps of violet. Wow, he looks awful. I heard Yashi punched him. At least Quacks will make a bold entrance at the academy. The students around Yashi stepped away and glared, but he didn't judge them for it. If there were a mirror in front of him, he would probably glare as well. Silly move, Yashi. To his surprise, Alora appeared next to him. You injured our star student. I know, he really messed up. It's not the first time you've done that, I suppose. Alora looked over her shoulder. You're very lucky his parents aren't throwing a fit. They're being all smiley with your father right now. Like, they're not angry at all. If the hotel wasn't staring him down, I doubt they'd be this forgiving. I'd say the staring is their fault for dressing up so fancy. They're fully confident he'll get selected, and they're not even hiding it. Yashi looked back at the avariums. Quax's father was wearing a sleek, black suit, and his mother was wearing a glittery dress that trapped every pair of eyes for a moment too long. They were nodding at Martu with wide grins, likely assuring him not to worry about Quax's eye. Yashi's gaze drifted back to Quax. Unlike his parents, he was growing more nervous by the minute. He started fidgeting with two quartz marbles Yashi had gifted him for his eighth birthday. He hadn't seen Quax do that in ages, and it was oddly touching. I can't imagine the pressure Quax is under right now. If he doesn't get selected, the island will quite literally sink. <laughs> so, did I miss anything at school yesterday? Hmm, let's see. Drama about Quax's eye, a lecture on the history of the academy, and tips for the ceremony. That's about it. What kind of tips? We just stand here, don't we? They recommended we pack small sentimental items with us in case we get selected by surprise. Did you pack anything? N me? Why would you ask that? Better question. What are you hiding in your bag? Now you're being ridiculous. Your scores are almost as high as Quax's. It's not a crazy assumption to think you get selected too. And surely you know that, because you did pack your bag. She crossed her arms. You know how rare it is for a girl to get selected. The Guardians have physical standards, too. You never know. You're always a killer attack. <laughs> hey, I'll talk to you later. I should apologize before the ceremony starts. Good luck. Yashi dove into the crowd. The other 15 and 16-year-old stepped aside before he could skim their shoulders. By the time he reached Quax, a gap had formed around them isolating the two old friends together. Yashi held his arms awkwardly behind him to make a statement that he didn't have any harmful intent. Quax's eyes were glued to the stage, but surely he knew Yashi was there because he'd slipped the marbles into his book bag. Quax, I'm really sorry about your eye. And I'm not just saying that. I mean it. I've been a horrible friend. You've been under so much pressure with everyone rooting for your selection, and I never stopped to notice. I was too worried about the possibility that she might actually leave someday. It wasn't just about the incident or my thoughts about the Guardians. Growing up, I always assumed we stayed in each other's lives. But as a Guardian, you would... Disappear. Yeah. Like cow. Quax finally faced him. Yashi, there's something you should know. Welcome to the biannual selection ceremony. The crowd cheered in response. What is it? Mm, not now. They reverted their focus to the guardian on the stage. He had a four-petaled flower emblem branded into his forehead, and his overcoat flowed down to his calves, nearly skimming his shiny boots. On his back was a holster with two sheaths for his swords. My name is Commander Roz. His voice sounds familiar. I am honored to announce the 20 Western students we've selected to train at Belladonna Guardian Academy this cycle. Silence followed, as Commander Roz referred to a golden page in his hands. Limbo Brackle of Vakoi City. Salen Brackle of Vakoi City. The crowd mumbled. Siblings? That's a first. K.O. Pickett of Miranda. Vel Patura of Miranda. Yashi bit his lip. 
He wasn't sure what made him more nervous. Quacks getting selected, or quacks not getting selected. He counted names in his head as Commander Roz continued. Dice Bayon of Frontal. Sixteen. Pinto Dempsey of Frontal. Seventeen. Sana Rickaby of Nominer. Eighteen. A brief pause. Commander Roz lifted his chin. Quacks of Arium of Citra. The crowd applauded wildly, and Yashi sighed in relief. <sighs> Quacks, please say your brief goodbyes before joining me on stage. Quacks smiled at Yashi. Hey, Yashi. I'm going to miss you. I'll miss you too. Excuse me. Alora shoved her way through the crowd, reaching their isolated bubble. Hey, Quacks. You better last a while. We could use better desks in the science room. <laughs> Goodbye, Laura. The crowd parted for Quacks to reach his parents. He said goodbye to his mother first, who kissed him on the head, then to his father, who whispered something into his ear that Quacks nodded to. And finally, Martu ruffled Quacks's hair for the final time. Unlike the day prior, Quacks didn't flatten it back into place. All of Citra watched in fascination as Quax walked toward the stage. They were happy for him and what his selection would bring to the community, because Citra had, once again, produced a star. But he was a shooting star, one whose fate was to flash by before vanishing, leaving behind only a lingering sense of awe. They were simultaneously lucky to have witnessed him, and unlucky to have lost him. Yashi chose to focus on the memories they shared, their family dinners, their walks to school, their games during lunch break, their days off in the fields. He chose to focus on when the star was overhead, rather than the moment it shot away. I can't believe he's actually leaving. At least that puts you at the top of the class. By default. How shameful. Quax joined Commander Roz on the stage and bowed in gratitude. The Guardian held a palm in the air, silencing the crowd. It was only then when Yashi recognized him. Commander Roz had been the school instructor with a bandage on his forehead, who had stopped him by the wrist to praise him. That's strange. What? And finally, Yashi Konya of Citra. Belladonna. Book One, Nightshade Academy. Written and narrated by Mel Tori Franca. Produced by Mel Tori Franca and Wilson Hensley. Edited and mastered by Juan Pablo Diaz. How did we get here? Something went wrong. We worked hard for this life that we don't want at all. Cover art by Mad Studio. Score by Jida Puspita Osri. Theme song composed and produced by James Sinclair Stodd. Starring Jason Brown, Anthony Andreas Echeverri, Melissa White, Alex Bowie, Patrick Viersba, Julia Risto, David John Bors, Connor Blanc, Cody Keel, Ellie Chua. Ben Autry, Walter Mack. Dave, it's really true that the sky weeps with us. If it's really true that heroes live in stars. Featuring the voices of Gwyneth Evans, Jeff Rosenau, Philip Krajanoff, Lucas Hensley. Levi Titus, Angie Eggers, Willem Degar, Allison Prophet, Maria Palmo. Nightshade Academy is produced in association with Lost Island Press.